With two generations of apartheid serving to isolate whites from all but the most superficial contact with blacks, South Africa is a nation divided by ignorance, fear, and racial prejudice. While blacks commemorate Heroes Day, white South Africa celebrates the Day of the Vow, symbolized by the Fuertrecker Monument outside Pretoria, legitimizing their claim of the God-given right to self-determination, a euphemism for apartheid, and the strategy designed to maintain white sovereignty and preserve Afrikaner heritage through black oppression. Instilled with the constant fear of a mythical, communist-inspired total onslaught bent on destroying the sacred fabric of South African life, white South Africa reacts with a confused and obsessive perspective to the morass of problems created by apartheid ideology. Government action taken in perpetuating apartheid strategy is legitimized in the name of state security. Through censorship, selective and slanted reporting, the state employs its most powerful servant to justify and endorse the official point of view, and in so doing, further obscures the painful realities of the South African crisis. Good evening. The United States says it considers the African National Congress to be an African nationalist organization which is seeking to replace the present government of South Africa through violence as well as other means. In a statement issued by the State Department, the United States government says it continues to support the process of peaceful evolutionary change in South Africa and to encourage those who in word and deed promote such change. The statement says the government deplores violence from any quarter and therefore categorically condemns all terrorist and other violent acts committed by the ANC or its members. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Information, Mr. Pickwater, says the United Nations Security Council has gone against the UN Charter and against the facts in deciding to blame South Africa for last week's attack on ANC targets in Mazeru. The Security Council unanimously... Polarized by apartheid, basking in comfortable ignorance, white South Africans are the victims of a dangerous deception. Several thousand people, old and young, attended Day of the Vow meetings throughout the country. At the ceremony at Blood River, the head of the security police, General Johan Kutzir, said there were people on the political right and left wings who were out to destroy the fabric of South African society. Just as the communists would fail in their aims, so too would far right wing exclusivists. <laughs> the rechtvaardigheid van die aanwending van geweld om verandering teweeg te bring is aan die orde van die dag en hoog heilig is daar selfs diegene in ons land wat nie heiver om geweld in die naam van die evangelie te verkondig nie. To give further substance to this mass deception and ultimately to defend the privileged status quo against its own oppressed people, for the minority regime, military preparedness is a top priority. South African troops are tough, well-trained and confident of their superiority, allaying white fear about internal strife and the threat of external aggression. Local production of military hardware by South Africa's Arms Corps has enabled the South African Defence Force to build up a formidable arsenal of sophisticated weapons, tailor-made for guerrilla warfare. South Africa now possesses one of the world's deadliest artillery systems, and the NATO publication 15 Nations reviewed the latest G6 gun as one of the finest of its kind in the world. At a cost of 8,5 million rand per day, this formidable military machine has more kill power than the total military might of sub-Saharan black Africa. Obsessed by the illusion of the total onslaught, this show of invincible might offers the guarantee of continued white supremacy and black exclusion from meaningful participation in the political decision-making process of South Africa. Let us also salute those who have fallen and those who continue to, to buy freedom with their lives. Let us salute those, those whom the government of this land consider to be 